anytime you have a police officer who commits a crime, I think they deserve to be treated more harshly than the general public because they've taken an oath to uphold the law. And then when you have a police officer who violates the trust of his family members, it's even more serious. And this it was just fortuitous that these uh, SD cards were located. They were dropped at a McDonald's in Cock Holland. His face was on them. The faces of his victims are on them. We were able to track it to a particular house in Flint Township. We verified who those people are. And like I said, there were over 100,000 images of two victims on these three SD cards. We found additional computer capabilities within the house, additional storage medias, and he made statements to the officers that yes, it was in fact the person who did this. He took, he installed the cameras that allowed him to take the pictures. He took the pictures, he viewed the pictures, he made additional copies of them and carried them with him as he traveled throughout the state on SD cards and viewed multiple times on a tablet that's now located in his vehicle. So we believe these are very, very serious crimes. Ma'am, were the pictures of the uh, two, uh, two alleged victims, um, both uh, in the house with him, either related to him either by marriage or by blood? They were related by marriage. Okay. So, uh, and they were living in the house with him. Is there any idea how long you'd been taking these photos or videos for? Well, the ones on the SD cards that we located, we know were taken in 2015. We don't know about other storage media at this point, but we know when the house in Flushing was purchased, and it's actually Flint Township, but we know when it was purchased, and we have verified that the photos on the SD cards were in fact taken in several rooms within that house. Have you been in contact with the victims or the victim's mother? I have not personally, but uh, the trooper who was seated with me at the council table while we were doing the arraignment was with her yesterday, spoke with her, and her statement was, do what you have to do so these children can be protected. You know, when he was stopped by the police, he had uh, multiple weapons and thousands of rounds of ammunition available to him yesterday. We were very concerned that there might be an incident when the police attempted to stop him. Fortunately, that did not occur. There, we do know there are additional weapons in his house. And, you know, as he stated to the judge today, I have destroyed my family because of my actions. And I believe that makes him a danger to have any weapon there, whether he, you know, does something to harm these victims or, and as I did say, I believe that he is a potential suicide risk. And you could see his affect in the video on the arraignment. He's despondent over what he has done. And I believe that that makes him dangerous to himself. Ma'am, was the house, uh, with the pictures, in regards to the pictures, was the, was the house rigged in a way to get these pictures done? Or were they, I mean, I, were they clandestinely taken? They were clandestinely taken. It, and that's why we have the capturing the image charge, because those have to be taken without knowledge, and they have to be done in a place where a victim has an, a reasonable expectation of privacy. Any concerns about this growing as the search as you guys continue to search? We don't know if there have if any of these photos have been shared with anyone else, the, the pictures will be sent to NICMIC, um, Victim Identification and Recognition Program in Washington, D.C., to see if they are um, have been shared anywhere on the Internet. We have multiple, multiple additional media that need to be analyzed. I will, the ICAC, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, that's part of our county, they are actively imaging the drives as we speak. And until that analysis is done, we do not know if there are any contact victims. We don't know if there are additional victims. Just goes to show you never know who, you never know, do you? And, and that's the, the sad thing, because it was a police officer, someone who at one point was a well-respected member of not only the community here, but the community where he worked in Saginaw. Um, as a prosecutor, what do you hope to, is there any chance of a plea deal? I mean, are you just like... We're, we are going forward with this. Um, Mr. Layton is the one who directed me to appear at the arraignment, and he wanted just a bond of $100,000. So to get double that is a very good step. But this will not be a case where he gets a little slap on the wrist and told, don't do it. We are seeking prison.